Now we're on to the following day. Royal Rumble. Quite the hyped up show. Why wouldn't it be? Every major title being defended and the Rumble for who would go to headline WrestleMania against the champ? Well, it gets you excited, doesn't it? So here we started off. The WWE Women's title being defended by Charlotte Flair. She usually doesn't go by the name Flair. It's usually just Charlotte. So this was kind of interesting, but it was more than appropriate. Coming down to the ring in her frilly robe, reminiscent of her father, even doing a little spin. And her opponent, the ever huggable. Bailey. And Bailey, she's been there before. She's fought hard to get where she needs to be. Could she get it done here against the Queen? Only one way to find out. I'll tell you this women's wrestling has certainly come a long way. They went all out. I don't know what it is about the drinking water at Titan Towers, but the female wrestlers are taking sick bumps these days. Everything flowed so well. Charlotte even thought she had the upper hand early in the match and slapped on a figure eight which Bailey reversed and almost got Charlotte to tap out to. It's very rare that ever happens. In fact, off the top of my head, I can't think of any time when a reversal on the figure four has achieved submission, but it's a first for everything, right? They spilled out, they brawled across the floor, and some heavy, heavy hitting stuff happened there. But it wasn't until Charlotte hit natural selection on the ring apron that she took Bailey out. Her limp body falling off the apron, Charlotte picking her up, rolling her back in the ring. For the one, two, three. Bailey might have lost, but she didn't tap out. And Charlotte had to get pretty desperate to hold on to that belt. Then, of all the matches to follow that up, you have Kevin Owens defending his title. His universal title against Roman Reigns. In a no-disqualification match, that in itself should be exciting, but they did add one stipulation. For those two, it would be no disqualification, but that didn't mean that Jericho, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens' best friend, would be allowed to interfere. Now, did they just keep him in the back and have that be it? No. He was put in a shark cage and elevated above the ring. just to make sure they could keep an eye on him. Okay, this should make things interesting. And it was. With Owens being Owens. And Reigns being Reigns. The brutality gradually picked up. The anger began to spill over. It seemed like Reigns was going to get the win a couple of times. Especially after a late-timed scenario where 
Owens had been stacking a bunch of chairs like a chair pyramid and planned on superplexing Reigns onto them. That wasn't the case. As Reigns knocked Kevin off with one of his big kicks, Owens fell, collided. Reigns even ended up putting him through the announce table. And with various tables and chairs strewn about that were attempted to be used as weapons, including one propped in the corner, Reigns said screw it, was ready to just call it a match. That power bomb, that was it. Nothing to worry about. Even the brass knuckles Jericho had snuck in and dropped to Owens during the match didn't seem to get the job done. But now Reigns is going to become the universal champion. Until Braun Strowman showed up. Choke slamming the former United States champion onto the table. That didn't give because it was the German announce table and we all know. German engineering, yeah? Strowman then took the limp body of Reigns into the ring, power slammed him through that table. And now recovering Owens, only seeing the prone body of Reigns crawled over and got the pin. And with that, Kevin Owens retained. Controversial fashion, but hey, they said no DQ. Can't really blame them for that. It's not cheating if it's all allowed, right? So then we move on to the cruiserweight title. Rich Swan defending against the self-proclaimed king of the cruiserweights, Neville. For a lot of people, they'd never seen Neville act like this before. So angry, so aggressive, so tactical. If you'd ever watched any of his stuff in New Japan, you knew. You knew. This is like every other guy, Jin. And they all have mean streaks. Must be something in the air over there. Mm. The way the sport's handled. Just a little more aggressive. They have to be. So, Neville. But for a few weeks, premeditated attacks on Rich Swan had the upper hand, it seemed, going in. And Rich had his confidence, his athletic skill, and quite the pain threshold to go with. But Neville just knew what to do. He was a seasoned veteran. Hell, he helped train Rich Swan. At least perfect and fine-tune some of the skills he has. That didn't mean Rich hadn't learned more things away from Neville. He was able to counter alternate strikes. He even made a standing frog splash look devastating. I mean, the guy's got a natural vertical leap that's frightening. He used to win matches with a standing 450. Can, can you even think of that? How's one able to do that? Get that high in the air and then rotate their body properly to get the job done. Swan can, Swan has, and Swan will again. But it was Neville that ended up picking up the win. A superplex from the top rope, the very top rope, to a near fall. But immediately he goes for the ring lock, slapping it on Swan in so much pain by this point. 
had no choice. No one could fault him, no one could blame him. He finally gave up. He submitted. So now, Neville is the legitimate king of the cruiserweights. And he doesn't intend on letting anyone stop him. All that heavy hitting action onto the semi main event. AJ Styles defending the WWE World Championship against John Cena. man with the second most titles to his name. Ric Flair, a 16-time champion, got one of his titles at the Royal Rumble. John Cena, 15. Up against his harshest critic, AJ Styles, who thinks that Cena should just leave because they can do it without him. Can they? AJ was ready to prove it. And boy, did he. Back and forth they went again. They've had quite a few good matches. This wasn't going to be any different. The exchange of submissions alone, as I believe Ronaldo said, a smorgasbord of submission holds. Even doing a little STF pissing contest. Cena applied it. Styles applied it. Then they went to alternate submissions that they might know. Styles thinking with a man as big and strong as Cena, if he took out one of his arms, maybe that would get the job done. Maybe he couldn't execute everything as well. And so he went for a cross arm breaker. Cena had a few more tricks in his sleeve, including an avalanche attitude adjustment, top rope attitude adjustment. But even that couldn't keep Styles down. What could was two back-to-back -back attitude adjustments, but the execution was quite unique. Catching Styles attempting to do a phenomenal form off the top rope. Cena hit his first one. He didn't quite let go. In fact, he floated over to roll back up with Styles across his shoulders, only to do it once more. To get the one, two, three. So now Cena is tied with Ric Flair, 16 time world champion. He earned it. I guess he did. But it wouldn't be called a Royal Rumble without a Royal Rumble. And that's what everyone really came to see. Starting off the countdown. Big Cass being escorted to the ring by Enzo Amore. Doing their full, full intro. The crowd getting right behind him. I mean, the Alamo Dome became alive when their music hit. And then no 
numbers begin to build up. The thing that's so interesting is certain individuals of larger size were actually carted to the ring so that they wouldn't be wore out as easily. I mean, you got a lot of meat to work with, you gotta take it as easy as possible. But, even though a lot of people said they were kind of disappointed, I actually liked what I saw. Several debuts, some unexpected, some well-timed. Like when the countdowns were going, and they were at number 10, and the audience joked along and did a 10 count, because... You know, they still remember Ty Dillinger's awesome match the night prior, only for him to come out at number 10. Was so well played. It was brilliant. It was Fred uh, Bon. And he got his shine in. You also had late into the match the gentleman, Jack Gallagher, show up with William III, his umbrella. And those antics he did with Chris Jericho and that umbrella were quite amusing. I mean, anyone else would have just low-blowed Jericho and have that be it, but no. Gallagher, sorry, Gallagher, Low blows Jericho, undoes William the Third, and lets it open up in the ring, and spins it in between Jericho's legs. So pretty much, Jack Gallagher turned Jericho into a spinner. I guess you could say William the Third ended up looking like a pinwheel. So maybe in his own gentlemanly way, Gallagher was telling Jericho to blow him. He even attempted a Mary Poppins style axe handle. He kept his umbrella open, climbed the top turnbuckles, and attempted a double axe handle while doing a Mary Poppins float. It was splendid. It was just so, so much fun. Of course, you also had a representative of Texas show up. None other than, nope, not Shawn Michaels. Although he did kick off the pre-show. No, no. Mark Henry. And Mark Henry made us Proud. Knocking suckers down left and right and then throwing the horns up one more time. That's how it's done. You also had James Ellsworth. That was... That was fun. That was amusing. That was... <laughs> oh, that, that was... It was great. So he had to stare down Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Luckily, Dean Ambrose was right behind him in the next spot. And Dean, who had had a pass with both Ellsworth and Lesnar, let bygones be bygones with Ellsworth, psyched him up, Said on three we go. One, two. Ellsworth gets excited, guns it, and Dean just lets him die. Hmm. But at least he had some fun, right? Paulo Cruz also debuted. Showcased some of his skill. 
it is appropriate that he usually comes out in green trunks because unfortunately there he just has times where he's not polished I, I don't know what else to say about it sorry I call it the way I do So many nice surprises and shocks, especially seeing Luke Harper turn on the Wyatt family. I mean, it's justified, mind you, with all the abuse and neglect they've thrown his way. Seeing him finally give Bray Wyatt a discus clothesline, only to attempt his sister Abigail on his father figure. Wonderful moments. Of course, Randy had to go and screw it all up, taking Harper out. But when The Undertaker got involved with everything, you knew the bodies were about to hit the floor. Especially after seeing Goldberg take out Lesnar like that. Again! It's interesting because Goldberg even got a full-on entrance as opposed to just trotting down like everyone else. He got his pyro and his smoke and everything. But I guess he earned it. But when The Undertaker got in there, that's when he finally had a moment that I don't recall us ever having prior to that. The Undertaker, Bill Goldberg the same ring at the same time and then Undertaker takes him over the top rope so now it's 29 people who's going to be number 30 chance start Joe 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 because rumor is it might be Samoa Joe that that makes his Royal Rumble debut Oh, they got a Samoan, all right. Roman Reigns. I guess this was sort of an apology for forcing him to defend his belt the year prior at the Rumble and come in at entrant number one, only to fail at the end and not hold on to it. The crowd was not pleased. Especially when Reigns took out... The Undertaker. They locked eyes after that. And, oh yeah. Something might be happening very, very soon. But you still had Bray. You still had Randy. You still had Reigns. Until Reigns took out Bray and formed yet another record at the Royal Rumble with the most eliminations, just after Kane. So now it was Randy and Reigns. Reigns thought he had the upper hand. Came in for a spear only to be caught off guard by Randy Orton and his RKO. Reigns was hobbled, tossed over the top, for Randy Orton to win the Royal Rumble, which means that the winner of the Royal Rumble was a SmackDown guy and the champion that he was probably going to face would be the world champion was John Cena. So, so once again we have Superman versus Lex Luthor. Like, again, for the umpteenth time. I mean, there, there, there are unending rivalries. I understand that. The Cowboys are always going to go against the Eagles a little harder than anyone else. But we're, we're having this again? I mean, yeah, the, their matches have gotten better. They have a few new tricks up their sleeve. I mean, heck, Randy's got a stable behind him this time. Watching his back. 
but you know th this isn't like Batman and the Joker the Joker every now and again has an accomplice or someone that does it in the Joker's name if I recall even Deathstroke's worked with the Joker to try and take out Batman at least once but when it comes to Randy and, and Cena, it's always Lex and, and Supes. And Luther is never one to use someone else to get the job done. He wants the credit for himself. The crowd ended up getting cheated, at least in their eyes, with one potential match. But the following night... Crowds were wanting Joe, and that's what they got in a surprise attack. Because it looks like Samoa Joe is now Triple H's hired muscle against Seth Rollins, who interrupted NXT TakeOver San Antonio to get his shot at Trips. Just makes you wonder what's going to happen this weekend. Any big wrestling events happening? Why, yes, there is. This Saturday, it's National Pro Wrestling Day at the Chikara Wrestle Factory. It will be absolutely free with donations going to the Superkick Foundation. It's a wonderful charity used primarily in wrestling. Last couple of years, they found a way to try and stream the event for everyone. And with how Facebook's operating now, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it again. But just in case, go to Chikara Pro online. Look them up, Google them, do whatever you have to do. Get all the details. I do know that Certain famous faces are going to be there, like Dasher Hatfield and the Colony. And there's supposed to be some Young Lions debuts. Details are kind of fuzzy at the moment because, well, I, I don't have all of my notes. But, with indie wrestling, always remember cards subject to change. But, there's some stuff you should do. Check that out. See some new faces. But above all else, get behind the tank.